So my name is Ethan Jewett. I'll be moderating the sessions that are coming up this afternoon or evening, depending on how you're counting. I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota in the US. And I'm really excited to introduce Andreas Kuntz, who is um, one of the sort of original UI5 folks, has maybe been around for longer than UI5 working on this project. Um, and he's here to talk about the sort of next generation of UI5 development that we've already heard some about with TypeScript. So I'll hand, hand it over to Andreas. Thanks for the introduction. Let's talk about, about TypeScript right away. So to get everyone to the same level, I'd give you a short introduction about TypeScript first. So what is it and why would you use it? So basically TypeScript is JavaScript plus types. So um, Nothing else than that. It's just an addition, addition to JavaScript. It's a superset of JavaScript. As you can see on the right-hand side, so the blue stuff, that's the TypeScript stuff, and the white stuff is pure JavaScript. So for example, um, in the first line, you see how the type number is assigned to the variable, some, some number as it is uh, declared. You don't always have to do that. In the second line, you see the variable other number also gets type number, even though it's never written. Um, it's because of the assignment of the number one and TypeScript knows that automatically. So there's some implicit typing going on. Um, there are more complex things like uh, you can define structures like point here with X and Y. There are enums, union types and so on. So there's more to TypeScript than this, but that's the basic idea. It's something that is important that is only happening at development time. So only while you are writing the code, it's not something that can be executed by browsers. Browsers only understand JavaScript, no TypeScript. So there has to be a build step um, between your development, your TypeScript code and the browsers executing it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the main web page of it is typescriptlang.org. This is basically invented by Microsoft, uh, but it's now a community thing, worldwide accepted thing. And yeah, it's, it's, it's de facto standard for typed JavaScript. And when you have a JavaScript library that has not been developed in TypeScript, then of course, there's no definition of the types. There's no information about the types there. And this is what the d.ts type uh, files are for. So that's a type of files where you can provide type definition for JavaScript libraries that have no type information. And this has been done for many, many libraries, also for UI5 now. Uh, so much for the what, and now the question is why? Why would you use TypeScript? And there are a couple of advantages I want to line up, outline now. Um, there's more that you can see later. So for example, because the editor knows about your code, about the types of the objects you handle, and also about the APIs that are available, it can give you great code completion. So when you have an object, it can immediately pop up all the methods that are available on this object, so you don't have to type everything. You also get in-place documentation. So when you hover something, it's displayed what it is and what you can do with it and so on. So all the documentation is right there in the editor. And you can even click through to the definition and so on. So it's a bit like in Java when you develop. There's also a big advantage regarding um, error messages. Um, in JavaScript, you often face the problem that you have written something and then just retry it. So run the application to test whether it works. And TypeScript can give you much more often a hint when something is wrong already while you are typing because it knows all the objects, all the types, all the things. Um, it can give you much better errors in advance before you restart the app. And of course, it also can give you better, better um, refactoring and maintenance is easier when everyone immediately sees more what the types actually are holding for the variables. All right, so in the poll, I've seen the majority has some basic knowledge. Um, some are completely green, some have already a quite solid backgrounds. So it's a mixed audience and that, that's just perfectly fine. So what is new now? SAP UI5 has already provided some type definitions, mainly for, for code completion in Web IDE for basically the JavaScript version of UI5. 
Um, what is new now is that we are investing a lot into really making those type definitions right, into making them really good and providing them via stable and official channels. So um, they are, as you can see at the bottom of the slide, available via NPM as at SAP UR5 or OpenUR5 slash TS types ESM. They are also available via definitely type.org. That's the main hub for type definitions. And therefore, they are also available as just add types, OpenUR5. And what does this ESM mean in the end? So this means ES modules. We thought when you anyway have a compilation step, um, wouldn't it then be good to allow developers to use modern JavaScript as in ES module loading, ECMAScript uh, class definitions and so on. And this is exactly what we suggest and what we supply now. You should write modern JavaScript. And therefore we also don't su support anymore the globals that are anyway discouraged, like writing SAP, so the global object SAP, dot M, dot button, something, but really use the modern JavaScript. And we will take care of providing a way to also translate this to the UR5 APIs, to the traditional ones. Uh, what you see here is on the right-hand side, what you are used to use. So that's a web app folder where you develop your controllers, your, your, your um, component JS and so on. And then you have a bundling step using UR5 tooling into the dist folder often at least. And, um, in addition to that, we will now have a second build step that is happening before that, so to say. So we suggest to develop your TypeScript stuff in the source folder and then transpile to the web app folder. So that's powered by the Babel, by the by known transpiler Babel. And there are two things happening in this step. So first is uh, the transpilation or compilation of TypeScript into regular modern JavaScript. And the second thing then is um, the transformation of this modern ES6 modules and so on, uh, JavaScript into traditional UI5 API calls. We will see this in a second. So that's the sort of build pipeline we suggest to use. Of course, you are free to choose differently. Uh, the third thing we provide is, of course, we want to, you to use that TypeScript stuff. So we have to provide documentation and samples and everything. You have already seen this scaffolding template in the keynote of the UI5Con where Peter showed it in the easy UI5 generator where you can just generate your own TypeScript-based UI5 apps. So I will focus on this on the two first ones here. Uh, one is a very simple Hello World app. That one focuses on the setup of the project. So how the pieces fit together. There's also a detailed step-by-step -step description available there that, um, that explains exactly how you get from zero, from nothing to the setup step-by-step. -step. And along the way, I, sh I think you should get a good feeling and good knowledge about what you're dealing with. And as this application is very simple, very plain, it doesn't have a lot of code, you also provided a TypeScript version of the already published UI5 cap event up sample. So there you have to go to the TypeScript branch, that one is new. And you will see um, the real life application, so to say, written in TypeScript. There's also a TypeScript code walkthrough that explains a bit the pieces. And we will also have a look later. So that's now the three parts of what we provide a new. Um, I think it's time to see it a bit more in action, to see some code, to see some running code from app. So let me share my screen. That's the um, your five TypeScript Hello World app that shows you the basic setup. And actually I've prepared a tweet. So if you are using or checking hash your five con on Twitter, you should now get a link to that page. All right. Um, so that's the basic setup here. And in here is also the step-by-step -step document that I have mentioned that really explains everything in much detail. I won't go in that detail today, but just point out a few pieces. For example, in the package JSON, there are two places I want to show. In the build script, there's um, the call to the Babel transpiler. So this is really where the transpilation of TypeScript and modern JavaScript into traditional one happens. And the second thing I want to point out here is down in the dev dependencies. There's the 
import of add types, open your five. So that's the definitely typed versions. Um, where really the type definitions of UI5 and others are imported. They are then available in the node modules folder if you want to look into them. And this makes now to the editor um, the knowledge available about all the UI5 APIs. The second thing to show here is the TS config. That's basically a, a file that tells TypeScript what exactly to do. And there are some compiler options up here that define some details, not so important right now. If you are not using the add types package, but the add sub UI5 or add open UI5 ones, then you also have to add here a pointer to these type definitions because only the add types ones are automatically found. This is then visible in the other uh, project in the more complex app. Okay. And the last file I want to open here is the Babel rc.json. That's the Babel configuration file. And that one doesn't do, do a lot. It just calls first the TypeScript compiler. The Babel somehow starts at the bottom and goes to the top. So first the TypeScript compiler, and then this transform your 5 plugin, with, which translates modern JavaScript into the your 5 APIs. All right. And Apart from that, there's not much in this repository. There's the source folder where you see a regular UI5 app. You know the structure. The only difference is now that it's TypeScript, of course. And as the, um, as the code in here is not very complex, I'd like to switch over to the other app, to the UI5 Cup event app. But we'll do that in VS Code so we can see some interactivity. Um, so, this is now the registration controller in this other repository, the UI5 Cap event app. And you immediately see when you when you hover something, then the documentation pops up immediately. And you can also click through to the definition of the UI5 controller and you see the documentation. You could continue clicking here. Um, so that's all the in-place documentation goodies. But what you see here in the beginning of this controller, that's not TypeScript, that's just the modern JavaScript I've mentioned. That's just module imports in E6 uh, JavaScript, like massive script six style. There are some improvements planned to have not so many import lines here, but yeah, they're on the way. Then the next part, oh, my mouse wheel is really fast. The next part is pure TypeScript now. So that's definitions of some structures used in this application. And um, these are totally going away at runtime. So they are only here while you are developing, but they help you with um, identifying all the things you have here in the code. Next thing you see is the definition of a class that inherits from controller. This will also be converted to the regular controller.extend. Um, when the code conversion has taken place. This is again, not TypeScript, but more modern JavaScript specific. But now let's dive into the real code. So there's the init method of the controller that, that you know. And when you look at this code here, there's very little TypeScript. So what you see here is basically the original JavaScript. We've just <laughs> copied this over actually, and done some tweaks here and there where you need to do something. So there's just a few places, for example, here where the model, uh, component get model returns the base class where the model is, is cast um, to the v4 or data model because we know in this application uh, the default model is a v4 or data model. And then with this typecast, you can use all the specific methods on this one. But then there's a lot of plain JavaScript. Um, I don't see much TypeScript here. There's not a such cast because by ID it just returns a control base class, not the page, but we know, well, the one with the ID page is a page. Here, a parameter is typed for a function, but apart from that, you see it's, it's basically plain JavaScript. One last thing I want to show here in this code is um, the code completion stuff. I'm always real too fast. So when you say this dot, data models, then you get, of course, offered stuff like this. This would be possible in JavaScript maybe, but here you get the methods that are available on an V4 or data model in UI5. So this is this is cool to have it here. You don't have to type everything. You, say, can, you can say, okay, bind property, 
And as you open, open the braces, you get all the parameters listed and what they mean. So it really helps you typing or better choosing what you don't have to type then because TypeScript knows all the APIs that are available here. But let's get rid of that again. And finally, let's also go to um, some running code. Go over here again. Let's see here, I think. So that's that's this GIF cap event app. And you see down here, the browser executes the JavaScript file. But um, um, it also knows the TypeScript files because we have provided source maps. That's a mechanism to tell browsers what the original code was before a sort of compilation step. And so you, even if you set breakpoint here in the JavaScript, it will automatically jump to the TypeScript because it knows this is the code you have written and this is the code you probably want to debug. And I have to say this in the latest version of Chrome, this hasn't always worked, but let's ch check what it does. And in the past versions, it always has. Also takes a while now because this is the debug version lo loading lots of files. And you see now we are paused in debugger. We are in the TypeScript code and of component TS yes, actually, and can step through that and can really uh, debug the original TypeScript code you have written, even though the browser in the background executes JavaScript. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation. What you've seen now is that um, application code looks very normal. There's not a lot of TypeScript. There's not a lot of change for you required to switch to TypeScript. And what this layer of TypeScript will also be stripped away at runtime. So there's no performance overhead or so. You have seen the code completion and the automatic um, um, documentation, in-place documentation here. And that's that's really nice and boosting your efficiency when coding. And you also saw that you can debug the original TypeScript code. So what's next? Um, it's still work in progress, so to say. It's, it's a solid offering and we really recommend you to use that and, and to give feedback. But right now we cannot promise that there will not be any breaking changes to the type definitions because there are sometimes several ways how to model the same thing in those DTS files. And we have not always um, maybe found the best way to express something. So we are also looking for recommendations to do some, some something better. So expect some incompatible changes on the type definitions, but please still use it and give, give feedback. And yeah, apart from that, I think I'm done. Um, the things to take away are, please try out the TypeScript APIs for UF5 now use these type definitions and see how it improves the development efficiency. Um, don't expect everything to be stable. And remember, it's, well, it's urging you to use modern JavaScript, which is not a bad thing also. So we are still doing some work in the area of um, module imports to simplify that, maybe using generics, so you don't have to do that many typecasts, but basically, uh, that's the current state, and I'm happy that I could present it to you. So thanks for your interest. Um, so we do have a few questions, and I want to make sure to get those in front of you. And I think we've got a few minutes to go through those. Um, the the biggest and most popular question was whether the um, TypeScript transpile step is going to become part of the UI5 tooling itself. Hey, that, that's a good question. So at this stage, we have not done this yet, obviously. And I think we have not really talked about it, but it's pretty obvious next step. So I think it depends a bit on a team capacity and plans, but it would be a pretty logical step to encapsulate it also there. So um, I talked to Peter right away after the session and what he thinks about it. So we'll definitely look in this direction if the TypeScript offering is popular. And I think it is because there has been a huge interest in this session already and in the topic. And also in the polls, I've seen that um, the people who use TypeScript, they liked it or they are undecided, but only few disliked it. So people who use TypeScript really stay with it. So that's why we should into look, uh, look into this option. Yeah, it's, it's very popular for sure. 
Um, we might have to get out the uh, the old SAP forward-looking statements slide for this one, but um, but does CAP and the UI5 team offer support for TypeScript projects um, if customers create incidents regarding those projects? Um, I would have to say no at this stage, I would say. I mean, I anyway, kind of talk for CAP. Um, for UI5, well, we provide those, those type definitions right now as is, and there's no specific support guaranteed, but of course we are interested in error messages and we strive to like, like act upon them. So, so we want feedback. So you don't say, you shouldn't say, oh no, I won't report this because they will fix it, will not fix it anyway. Please report issues. And let's say we try our best without any guarantees. Yeah, and of course the transpiled project is just a UI5 project, right? So that would be, yeah. Um, that would be supportable if something was broken in the in the core library. Yeah, sure. Um, so I mean, if the bug is not TypeScript specific, then <laughs> I would say that you get the support. Yeah. Um, so maybe you can talk a little bit more about. There are a couple of questions that are definitely related. Um, one was around Babel and type checking during the transpile process, and whether TSC might be supported. And the second one, I think, related is around what um, the recommended staging and folder structure. Looks looks like um, for reuse libraries using TypeScript. Um, mm. it, you know the structure will be different, of course, depending on the transpiler. But yeah, okay. Let, let me start with the second one with the um, reuse library stuff. So right now we have focused on the, the main use case of just an app, so the the standard. Um, but we are well aware that you have custom controls in apps and that you have reuse libraries that you want to to use across apps. And that's like the next on our table to look into those, uh, to provide us examples for those. There's definitely something for to, to do for um, custom controls. There we are not yet done, but this is one of the next steps and the reuse libraries are already on our plate as well. Um, the Babel question, I also see it here. Um, during compile, the Babel, Babel uses the TypeScript plugin for for Babel, and so there will be type errors to, during the compilation. So the one that you saw in the Babel RC file I just showed, um, this compiler will also show the TypeScript errors. We have also in the example application, the Hello World app, um, a command that uses TSC for the type checking. So you can sort of check the types before even building. So that's that's an option we definitely recommend. Yeah, make, makes sense. Um, yeah, go ahead, Andres. I just saw the next question you wanted to ask to me. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, so why can I only use TypeScript definitions from version uh, 1.90? Uh, that, that's a good question. So in order to make these type definitions really right and correct and complete, um, we also had to do some fixes in UI5 itself. Sometimes even to the APIs, often for the documentation because the TypeScript definitions are generated from the documentation. So we had to do some fixes there and we cannot downport all those fixes to um, older versions. But you can still use these new type definitions with older versions of UI5, I think. Um, if you just live with the fact that some of the APIs in the definitions are not yet available, but all the rest of the existing APIs should be well covered. So you can use them, but we cannot easily provide type definitions for older versions without downporting lots of changes. Okay, and then last question really quick before we jump to the next presentation. Um, integration with Business Application Studio, how will that work? I don't know yet, <laughs> quick answer. Very good. Um, thank you so much, Andreas, for that, for that presentation and for answering all those questions.